Welcome to the Love and Victory Show with Val, where we will bring you candid conversation. In each conversation, we will talk about real life ups and downs while tackling unresolved matters. We will also unmask issues and truly speak straightforward and candid about our needs and brokenness while allowing ourselves to exhale so that we can become victorious. This is a place where you can be open to the possibilities of living life in abundance while gaining tools to become bold and complete. So let's get to it. Did y'all enjoy that music? Did y'all enjoy that music? It was hot. It was nice. And I guess I guess you guys can see we have some other advertisers on here. And I tell you, LV with Val is on the on the move. On the move. On the move. On the move. We're moving, on. Up. We're moving on up. Moving on up. Moving on up. <laughs> Dude, oh, look, brother Carter, the, brother Carter the woke up. Uh, I tell you, it was some behind the scene conversation that was going on. We can't wait to get this show started. All it's right. time for the introduction. Brother Carter, you want to introduce the people? Okay, introduce. Introduce the people. I, you know, Brother Carter take a different approach these days. Okay. He so don't introduce people to the show. Oh. People introduce themselves well, hello. to the show. Well, come on, do what you and do. And so starting to, to with my near left, I'm going to start with Brother Anthony there. There's your camera right there. You can tell the people who you are and what you're about. Good morning, everybody. My name is Anthony Muro. I am a lead mentor at the PTSD Foundation of America, Camp Hope. And I am all about making sure that somebody isn't alone, that everybody else is ignoring. Uh, Mm. That's what saved my life. That's what's given me purpose. And I live it day by day by letting others hold me accountable and vice versa. So uh, I won't continue on. I can be long winded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can be, he get long winded. <laughs> yes, he can. That, that, Good morning. That's because it's like fire. Yeah, yeah. Shut up in his yeah. bones. Yeah. Come on. On this yeah, show, yeah, we yeah, have yeah. quite a few yeah. long winded individuals on this show, <laughs> even one from Gainesville, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but it's a good win, though. It's a good win that come out of there. Yes, yes, yes. So we want to go to our uh, country western singer. Uh, and, uh, if you would introduce yourself, to Brother DD. My name's Darren. I, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how to follow Anthony. I was like, I, I, I'm not bringing hope. No, I, I, I try to bring hope to men. I try to bring, uh, let them realize who they really are in Christ. Their mm-hmm. their true identity. Not who the world's tried to bring them, uh, uh, tell them who they are. Not who their wives have tried to tell them who they are. Just who they are in Christ. All right. All right. All right. Okay. All right. And we have all the way from down in, uh, I was finna say Mississippi somewhere, but <laughs> <laughs> all the way from Gainesville, Florida, live. Uh, Justin, introduce yourself the way you, you do it. All right. Good morning, everybody. I got a brand new rap for you today. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Here we go. Hold up. Hold up, Justin. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, before you start, uh, let me then introduce myself. Hey, y'all, y'all know who I am. I'm Brother Carter, you know, <laughs> a co-host with uh, Val on the Love and Victory Show with Val. You know, I'm here every Saturday oh, just, just to bring you guys oh, a smile on your face oh, if I can. And if I will, that's what I want to do. So. You you introduce yourself? Then? Yes. Okay. All right, then. Because <laughs> right. Justin finna shut it down when he's okay. I'm the host. <laughs> Come on, you and know, I'm and I'm Abigail. Every, Sorry, everybody try to get their yeah. thumb in. Just to let, everybody know it's gonna be a mic drop when you get through. They try to get their thumb in real quick. Come on, Justin. man. Y'all put the pressure on me. <laughs> All um, right, I gotta bring the heat now. You gotta All bring right. the heat. Here All right, go. there we go. I'm Justin B. Long, and I'm back on the show again. Cosmo Magazine said I'm a 12 out of 1 to 10. I wake up each morning and jump out of bed with a grin because my life is awesome. No need for small violins. Mm. I was raised in a house filled with anger and violence. The best I could hope for was an hour of silence. Silence. I learned how to hate myself and dream of annihilance. I was trapped in a prison and I just couldn't climb the fence. The the time I was 20, I was my worst enemy. I just couldn't see the superhero inside of me. Too self-absorbed to think of somebody other than me. And the world's filled with people who acted the same as me. In my mid-30s, my life was crashing and burning down. Alcohol no longer could keep my feet on the ground. I was in for a penny, but it was taken way more than a pound. And in February 08, I turned the whole thing around. 
in early sobriety, I learned I had no identity. I'd hidden it away like it was some kind of obscenity. Hmm. So I invented myself in the way that I want to be with the help of some friends and a whole lot of therapy. Learning to love myself brought me to the L and V. Happiness is an inside job, and that's how it's got to be. You've got the power to change your whole life, don't you see? Use the force, Luke. It was always within you and me. I know who I am today, and I know who I used to be. I finally found peace with both those identities. Mm. Self-love is the key to the lock that will set you free. You can learn how it's done right here on Love and Victory. Come on, Come on, man. Man. Come on <laughs> You see why we had to, had to hurry up and get our names in real quick? <laughs> My job. Yeah. I love my brother from another mother. Wow, wow, Only wow, God, wow, only God, wow. only God. <laughs> In the loop, let's go. Yeah, man, we got to, we'll have to get a loop going with that, man. You know, get some, uh, uh, some beats and everything going oh. with the don't you, man? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I we love have it. some hype for Justin. Mm-hmm. Justin, you got this. Uh, we got some fire emojis. They love. Well, that's fire. <laughs> All right. I am totally absorbed with the lyrics. <laughs> Dang, that was fire. Come on now. <laughs> You're getting all the love, Justin. Come on, Justin. All right, I'm done. Thank you for having me on the show. <laughs> Thank you for being part of the show. Oh, I can out. Wow. All right. <laughs> all right. Now let's get to the show here, Miss Van. What well, you we got, got here? We got, wait, 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 wait. We got to oh, keep everybody in the loop. In the oh, loop. Okay. It's in the loop. Because, you know, here at Love and Victory, we got a lot going on. We got a lot going on. We got going. Love and Victory. We got LNV Enterprise Resources, mm-hmm. Inc. We got yeah. VK. We have a million things going on at all times. I want to play you all a quick video of this event we have coming up and I give you some updates and we're going to get, get right, this thing right. going. Yes. You are invited to the hottest event of 2024. Your favorite hosts, Val and Brother Carter, are going on the road. Joined by Stephanie Burrell and Tierra Sade, this panel will have you engaged in a candid conversation full of laughs in front of a live, interactive audience. Your MC, Yielded, will make sure you have a memorable experience. Join us at Phil and Derek's at 1701 Webster Street in Houston, Texas on Wednesday, April 24th for an evening of conversation, food, and fun. Doors open at 6 p.m. Reserve your tickets on Eventbrite by searching LV with Val on the road. See you there. Yeah. Yes. We ain't done. So I got a few more things to go over mm-hmm. for you guys. I'm gonna get the beat going. Mm-hmm. So, like you just saw in the video, we have our live event coming up. I'm gonna put something up on the screen so that you guys can um, scan right there and get your tickets. It is gonna be an awesome, awesome event, you guys. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have a live audience. You guys can ask questions. There's gonna be drinks. There's gonna be food. We're gonna have an MC. It is gonna be the event of the year. If you're not there, sorry, <laughs> sorry, you missed out. <laughs> you better be square. What, what if what if you're out of town and you can't make it? It's gonna be live on YouTube and Facebook as well. But if you can make it, mm-hmm. try to be there because it is going to be something else. Mm-hmm. So you guys can scan the QR code there. Uh, you can also buy tickets if you look at LVWithVal.com um, on the events page. It's right there. Or just search on Eventbrite LV with Val on the road and it'll be right you on up there. You definitely want to be up close and personal for this one. That's I tell right. you. We're, it's going to be on and popping. I'm telling you. And where are all the proceeds going for this event? They're going to l and Enterprise Resources Inc. Yes. Yes. And LNV Enterprise, y'all, we also have an event coming up yes. in um, in June. Whoa. Our bowling and brunch. This will be our second bowling and brunch event on June 30th from 2 to 4 p.m. You can scan there um, on the screen for your tickets, or you can visit Eventbrite and look up Bowling and Brunch, LNV Enterprise Resources, Inc., and it should pop right up. You can also visit LVERINC.com. And you can get your tickets through there. Yeah, yeah. And of course, you're listening to LV Val Radio, you guys. You know how many other radio shows we have? Yeah. We have so many other radio shows. We have VK Career Conversation every, every, I'm sorry, on the first Monday of every month at 8 a.m. We also have Empower Hour with Coach Anna, with our lovely, lovely Coach Anna. Mm-hmm. Um, That's every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. We have Tasteful and Toxic every Wednesday at 8 a.m. We are on a short break for Tasteful and Toxic, but we're coming back with the fire. And then I have a show with my mom called Journeys and Ambitions every Friday at 11 a.m. Yes. Yes. 
Now, you might be interested in, you know, collaborating with us here at LV with Val. If you want to advertise your business or promote anything on the Love and Victory Show with Val, please reach out to info at lvwithval.com or you can call us at 832-913-1359. All righty then. All right, all right. Well, we got you in the loop. And now we're getting ready to get this show going. Uh, one more thing before we take off with that. Uh, with all these different events we have taking place, if you cannot make it to these events, uh, your generous contribution will still be welcome <laughs> to uh, LV. Uh, E-R-I-N-C yeah, dot com. To the nonprofit organization. Everything yeah. that we do <clears throat> is to, from this show to the nonprofit, is to help someone less fortunate. Us getting on this platform every Saturday morning is about helping. But every dime that comes in through this platform mm -hmm. is going over to the nonprofit. So please, yeah. please, please help us. Yeah, scan that Q card. Q and the, what you call that thing? That the QR code. But that, <laughs> that QR code yeah. goes to buy tickets. But yeah. if you just visit L-V-E-R-I-N-C dot com yeah. and go to the donations, you can make a donation. Come yeah. on now. All, All righty right, then. then. Now it's time for the acronym and we're ready to get this show going. Yes. The acronym, as you guys know, is to set the tone for the conversation. Give us something to go off of um, so we can really all be on the same page so today's word is confident remember yeah. we're talking about men of steel you matter yeah. talking about insecurities and dealing with confidence so c is for cheerful oh, filled no. with good spirits o is for outgoing friendly and sociable n is for natural not artificial or manufactured mm -hmm. f is for forthright speaking clearly and truthful i is for insecure uncertain and anxious D is for deserving, worthy of praise and respect. E is engaging, um, charming, and attractive. Mm -hmm. N is for noble, having or showing high moral qualities or ideals. T is for tantalizing, interesting, and excited. All right. All I thought right, you might right, like right. that word tantalizing. <laughs> tantalizing. <laughs> tantalizing. I'm trying to figure out how to I get in confidence here. Because we want to show... No, no one is one hundred percent confident. Everybody has insecurity. Right. Oh, okay. I gotta show all so. sides okay. of the, all right. of the I'm situation. Just, I'm yeah. just checking. Yeah. <laughs> Good check. Good, Good check. check. Good check. <laughs> well, I. As I said early in the show, yes, it's Men of Steel, and I... You don't have to go through that. Just do the show. No, 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 you gave this up. All right. And so, as a woman, I really wanted to just kind of take this show on today because our men matter. You know, every woman needs to have a strong, whole man in her life, whether it's her father, whether it's her brother, whether it's her husband. And one of the things that I have personally witnessed... A lot of times men spend a lot of time denying their feelings, their emotions. They kind of keep them bottled down. And so mm -hmm. we don't really talk about that. Mm -hmm. But they're, what they show is a fake I'm OK. Mm -hmm. So today we're not going to be fake. We're going to mm -hmm. really talk, talk about it and go there. And I want to start off with, uh, have you ever felt insecure? And if so, how do you deal with it? I'm just mm -hmm. going to go there. Whoever want to take that. And I'm looking at you. I'm going to say yes to. Okay. On behalf of us all. Well, I, I don't want to just say a yes answer. I want to yeah. go a little deeper than yeah. answer. Well, that's just to answer the question that you asked. <laughs> okay. But so, that's, such a, that's such a man, right? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> didn't, I just, <laughs> didn't I just say he did yeah. exactly what I said yeah. men do. That's you you do. go right there at that yeah. top and you say yes, and then you're yeah. ready to move on. But you know, it's because we haven't been taught. Yes, we, we our, our dads didn't teach us to do that. Our dads taught us to be men mm -hmm. and real men. Just we don't share we're, the we're emotions. Not Justin and I talked about that last yeah. last time we were together. But, just, but well, look at what that has created. Yeah, that's created a whole broken man. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I'm, I'm not going to say a man, a boy. Because you're still dealing with that childhood trauma of not really knowing how to deal with your emotions mm -hmm. because you've been told, shut it down. So I'm going to go back to my question and I'm going to ask again, mm. have you ever been insecure? And if so, how have you dealt with it? No, or how no, do you now deal you with added it? added that part B to it. So now, now, it was I, there. now that mean that brings some substance. It was there. It, the was, yes. it was there. So It was there. So yeah, I'm so going to go on that <laughs> See what I'm gonna deal with? I'm gonna pass that on to Justin. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass the ball to you, Justin. I'll take it. I spent a whole great big majority of my life being wildly insecure. 
Mm-hmm. And I didn't know that that's what was going on with me. I just knew that I didn't feel right about who I was. And I was afraid that if people saw the real me, that I would be rejected. And mm-hmm. I didn't really even have a vision for what might happen. I was just too afraid to let anybody see. Mm-hmm. But the more I've learned about how I feel about myself and how that impacts everything about my life, the more I realized that my insecurities drove everything about my existence all the way through my 20s and 30s as an adult. Mm-hmm. And just in my 40s, I've learned how to, to get some of that under control and change my belief about who I am and try to get those insecurities under control or at least recognize it when they're when they're tripped and, and mm-hmm. driving my behavior. And like, but let me ask you a question. Everything. Everything. Let, me you, let me ask you a question there. What what does uh, insecurities look like? Oh, I, that's like a the, great question. A lot of us may not even know we're insecure because we don't know what it looked like. We think it looked like we just uh, uh, afraid or something well, of I'm that gonna, nature. If you don't mind, from a lady's perspective, it looks like clearly that you are running from something. When someone is unafraid, whether it's a male or a female, to answer a direct question, most of the time that's an immediate trigger. So mm-hmm. you're kind of shifting and trying to go in the opposite direction. Well, it's because- control. You want to control the situation mm-hmm. because you're afraid to be authentic because like Justin said earlier, yeah. you don't know where that's going. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. And you're out of you feel like, okay, if, if I answer this question, they may take me down a road that I'm not really ready to deal well, with. Uh, insecurities, I was trying to get Justin to answer this. It could be that you put on this very macho t- type of attitude mm-hmm. as though you did the big man on the campus. That, that could be a sign of insecurity well it is but w- the question is uh, the question how did you was, deal with what it what did it look like with, with, yeah how did how, what, what did well, it look like what does your insecurity question, look like i'm it's thinking the, yelling at your wife mm-hmm. beating yeah. your wife okay mm-hmm. beating your girl mm-hmm. that's it there's insecurity that's behind insecurity. that you yeah. think you're being a man mm-hmm. but, you, but there's insecurity behind that right having your boyfriend pay for you know not pay for for food yeah mm-hmm. That that dude's got some insecurities. He got some right? insecurities. Right. Uh, yeah. So, and so that, that's why I was like, asking Justin. I want us all to chime in. Now, I know uh, Justin gonna bring it to the table, mm-hmm. then we all can just kind of sit down and eat with it. But okay. <laughs> so well, go ahead, Justin. <laughs> what, what does this uh, insecurity look like? If you uh, insecurity can look like a, a number of things, but I think the mm-hmm. biggest one that we see all the time is people being defensive. Mm-hmm. We've got to be when somebody says something and then we have to defend ourselves. Yeah. That's because mm-hmm. we're we're insecure about that thing. Mm-hmm. Like if I if I said, you know, that's a uh that, that is a pink ass pink shirt that you're wearing, Brother Carter. Well, you know, my wife made me wear this. It's not really what I would have picked. Out. <laughs> you know, just, you know that, that's an insecurity. Yeah. And, and it it's in every aspect of our lives when we can't take criticism and we have to be defensive instead. Um, that's because we are insecure about who we are. Wow. Wow. 100%. Okay. Uh, I want to ask, I'm, I'm going to ask this question another way. You're in a relationship guys. And mm-hmm. I, I really need you all to jump in. You're in a relationship, but you know that you're struggling with a particular thing that makes you feel uh, less than it may be. Um, I know when I go in a big crowd, and I'm around a family member. I'm not saying you're around the family or certain people. You really start to get on edge because they're going to ask you something about your past or a conversation may come up about your past. How do you deal with that? Or how does that make you feel when you walk in and you're automatically assuming that someone's going to take you to a place of that insecurity or that brokenness or that little boy? That's good. I, if you don't mind, I'll jump in on that yes. real quick mm-hmm. because, um, yeah, uh, we all know what it's like to deal with our past. Yes. And and some people's pasts are worse than others. Mm-hmm. Some people have horrible pasts mm-hmm. and they don't want anybody to find out. Right. About so those now, skeletons in the closet. Exactly. Huh? Right. So now we're walking out in fear, uh, fear of men, fear of rejection. That's what insecurity right. looks exactly. like. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's what it's looked like in my life. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't want people to know that. Mm-hmm. I don't want people to know what that looks like. So, um, yeah, when you're talking about going out and, and not even in front of a family member, right. just in people, people in general, you're, you're, you know, if they know anything about, about you past, you know, and you're, you're afraid they're going to bring it up, it creates an insecurity in you sometimes. So right. 
I I've, think, d- I've had to deal with that. I think these insecurities are what you're talking about. It disconnects us. Yes. If we were actually transparent and vulnerable, we'd actually end up in some healthy relationships, authentic relationships. We would really know each other, which would develop into fellowship. It would give us opportunities. You would thrive in your talents. Mm-hmm. I believe insecurities are a, a hindrance to you being who you really were designed to be. I have to agree with you because one of the things that I used to struggle with is how other people saw me. Mm Because I would always go back to when I was in elementary and middle school and I would have to have problems speaking. And I had teachers that would always tell me, oh, you would never, you, you will never be able to do look this. At you you know, it, <laughs> look at me now. Uh, like me now. <laughs> yeah. And then also I struggled with people that were mean. Kids can be mean. Oh, you're ugly. Oh, you this. And so I had this whole idea of who I was based off of other people's opinions of me. Mm. And so I don't really worry about that. But I, what I do now, I can clearly see other people that walk with that same um, insecurity. Yeah. It's almost like God has given me. Uh, well, you uh, can't spot it unless you got it. There you unless go. You've been there. There you go. And I, and I, so what I did with that is I started to tell my own story. Absolutely. I don't give people power to tell anything about me, any shortcomings about mm-hmm. me. I tell them first. So, when they decide to throw it back at me, it don't hurt. It well, is what it is. Well, that goes back to what does insecurity look like? Is right. somebody mm-hmm. bullying or teasing somebody? They are the one that are insecure. That's right. Exactly. And they're actually projecting that mm-hmm. onto oh, yeah. somebody right. else. Yes. Mm-hmm. If we flip the coin on that where you're vulnerable and transparent, then I can tell who's who. There it's you like go. a superpower. We yes. talk about men of steel. Yes. Is that if I'm vulnerable and transparent, which takes courage. Right. If I do that, then I start to have vision and connection in what's authentic. Yes. And yes. sometimes that's easier said than done, though. Would Absolutely. you agree? Well, it's, it's easier it's easier said than done. well, it's very <clears throat> hard to do. But here's the thing. It's so necessary. And that's why I want to talk to the men. Mm-hmm. And I really want you guys to pull back the onion, pull mm-hmm. back the skin, because there are so many men and, and probably still sitting in this room right now. There are things that you guys are afraid to talk about mm-hmm. that is being a hindrance in your relationship. And may, and I'm not necessarily talking about a love rela- well, in a relationship, even at work mm-hmm. with other people, because you put this mass up and you've been taught to be hard. It's like a shell. I got it all together. What can you say to the young man that's out there that doesn't know how to deal with this? Wow. Great question. And I was earlier, you said, how did your other question, your add on question was, how do you deal with those insecurities? Yes. Mm -hmm. How do you handle that? Right. I think Justin would be an excellent one to answer that as well. (laughs) (laughs) I love this. You see how they flip it? Come on, brother. (laughs) Yeah, well, I, like, you know, I like Justin because he can put he he put put the plate on the table. Mm-hmm. Then we have some stuff to eat on. You yeah. know, go ahead, Justin. Dealing with insecurities is is its own thing, but mm-hmm. I think before you can deal with them, you have to even understand what it is and what why it you is. Have them. Yes, you know, and it's it's that negative self belief, and it's mm-hmm. it's that you know when I'm spending all of my time trying to manage other people's opinion of me and wearing mm-hmm. masks so that. So that they feel a certain way about who I am, it's because I'm not secure about who I am. And probably I don't even know who I am. I didn't know who I was until I was 40 years old. Yes. And, you know, because I had spent all my life building up this facade, trying to convince people that I was somebody else instead of who I am. You were trying to convince people of who you are because of what you've been told who you are. You understand right. versus never, ever having the opportunity to even kind of step back or even understanding how to step back and really get to know who you are. You're mm-hmm. only living your life based off of what other people told you. Mm-hmm. Right. I built my I built my self-esteem off of what I thought other people thought about yes. me. Yes. And I did that because I felt like my parents rejected me. And so mm-hmm. therefore I rejected myself. And so mm-hmm. I tried to be somebody else. So. I got all of my value as a human being by what I could make you think about me. And that's, that is not a sustainable way to live. That's an insane system for living, but we all do it for some people do it forever. I think we all do it for at least a period of our lives when you're young. 
And, and true security comes from understanding who I am and being okay with that and not worrying mm -hmm. about what other people think, not needing to manage other people's opinion of me, not feeding my own self-esteem off of your opinion. <clears throat> like that's, that's the difference. Sometimes you have to feed yourself esteem to, 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 to get confidence in yourself. It's I have to, yeah, that's what it's called, self esteem. <laughs> and so I had to get, I had to feed myself self esteem often over my life, period. You know, I, I told myself over and over again, I was the NBA uh, all star and I played like that. But I never was qualified to be a <laughs> <laughs> What are we gonna do with you? How, what are we gonna do with Brother Carl? But in my mind, mm -hmm. I was there. <laughs> I would like to go back to the original question go. of what does that look like and as far as what mm -hmm. would you say to a young man that's out there? Yes, yeah. that's important. And to me, what I would say is is that you need to be around or witness somebody who's actually stating their vulnerabilities, yeah. trans, uh, being transparent. Mm -hmm. Too many times, if somebody does that, somebody shuts them down or they make fun of them. But that person is a catalyst yes. to your own growth. And not only that, if I'm vulnerable and transparent to my insecurities and I find a young man that flocks to me, guess what? I'm not just going to mentor him. Mm -hmm. I'm he's mentoring. Gonna, he's going to mentor me. I'm mm -hmm. going to get something out of that. Absolutely. And that's what people don't understand. When you finally let the walls down mm -hmm. and you just be human and natural mm -hmm. and you just have a conversation. My light is going to affect, affect your light mm -hmm. or your darkness or vice versa, but it's going to connect and it's going to be infectious and it's mm -hmm. going to be a change to come. I want to ask this question. I love that. So, but, but it's, it's, it's going to be okay. This is the men show, right? Mm -hmm. And so I want to talk to real men out there. Real men find it difficult mm -hmm. to go out and just, open themselves up being vulnerable to other men that's 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 a task but but and are you being but, but no, are no, you no, being no. real men because it's still, i'm just asking a question and yeah we're being real men we're being real men as far as far as what we know to be a man is you know when you, you, you yeah, yeah yeah you know, you're going by every everything you know with inside of you and so i'm saying to the to the men out there it, it, that's a task to be able to just open up be vulnerable out there i'm not saying not do it i'm saying yeah. we have to work toward absolutely getting to this place of vulnerability absolutely. we have to work absolutely. toward that and and most men don't even think about that don't have the concept of even going to a place where i'm just gonna but open that's what i'm up. saying that's what i'm saying so on the show today mm -hmm. You guys have gotten to a place that you you wouldn't be sitting in here yeah. if you hadn't gotten to a place that you're ready to start talking about those things yeah. as a child, as a young boy. Well, that goes back to what Brother Carter saying is what does it look like? And I just said mm -hmm. earlier that you need to have some mentorship and fellowship mm -hmm. with somebody in a gradual, as you say, peel the onion back. Mm -hmm. We don't just go to the core of the onion, step out in public and no. start sharing everything. Right. Yeah. You're going to actually be with somebody that you've seen that you're like, what is it that they got mm -hmm. that makes that person a man? And there's mm -hmm. authentic women that mm -hmm. are saying, that's a man. Yes. If I hear a woman and I'm like salty about it, and then I might want to look at myself and say, all right, why am I mad that that woman's saying mm -hmm. that that's what a real man looks like? Mm -hmm. Here's the deal. I need to get with that guy mm -hmm. and figure out, mm -hmm. hey, is there some things you can teach me or show me? Because that's passing the torch. Oh, wow. On the yeah. flip side, we were taught, as Brother Carter said, we know what we know. Mm -hmm. I can hear some of my dad and him like getting loud and, hey, this is the way it is. Yeah. That's something we were taught. We need to be retrained. If we're mm -hmm. humble about it, then we can actually benefit from that mm -hmm. of being somebody's mentee mm -hmm. in that process. Well, I think, and I'm glad you said that, but someday, at some point, you have to stop saying, this is what I've been taught. Yeah, this is the way it is. I'm not I'm not talking about you, babe. I'm yeah. just saying. At some point, you have to stop saying, this is what I know. This is mm -hmm. how we are. You have to, at some point, say, you know what? I have a responsibility to that young man or to myself. Mm -hmm. So you have to start seeing things differently. So with that being said, mm -hmm. what was the lowest point? in your life dealing with some of your uh, insecurities. Ooh. We got to well, share that? Yes. I was in the military yes. back in the <laughs> back in the 80s. And and also I played sports all of my life. And uh, when you have to share showers with 
with men and and you see some men uh, uh covered mm-hmm. better than other men mm-hmm. and sometimes you compare yourself because you've been in that environment mm. and so you have your 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 esteem may be a little lowered yep because of others being in the showers and steams are higher. So that's based off. <laughs> I'm trying of, to make some sense out of this. Yeah. I'm just telling you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so you're saying that you measured yourself again. That goes back yeah. based off of what was, what you seen next to you by someone else's yeah. standard. Okay. Yeah. So how did you get past that? Well, uh, me personally, I got past that because I, begin to read scriptures and begin to understand that, you know, God made us all in his own image. Mm -hmm. He didn't make us all to be six, six, nine, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. He made us all in our own image. And so at that point, when you realize that and understand that you begin to just uh, embrace yourself, should I say, and, and have confidence just in who you are as an individual versus uh, comparing yourself to should someone. I say to other men mm-hmm. versus comparing yourself to who God made you to be. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll, that answer, I'll answer your question. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll go there. Um, lowest point in my life, I'd lost everything. I lost. And, and when I say lose everything, you lose your reputation, mm-hmm. you lose it all. And many, many mornings, many days lying in bed, not wanting to get out of bed, mm-hmm. crying, mm-hmm. Depressed men don't talk about that. Right. We don't. We don't talk. We want people to see that facade, like Justin was talking yes. about. We want people to see the facade that we're strong, that we mm-hmm. got it together. I didn't have it together, mm-hmm. and so um, <clears throat> going through the process, like Brother Carter did, where it's all of a sudden this relationship with God is no longer a um, I got to read, uh, follow all the rules in the scripture. All of a sudden mm-hmm. it becomes a relationship. Mm-hmm. And then what I discovered is it's not only my relationship with God, but as Aunt, uh, Brother Anthony is talking about, it becomes a community. Yes. And we got to have that community. And the, the, the final thing I'll say is you got to have the tools. Mm-hmm. I just started getting tools in my life just in the past year. My wife and I were going through what they call an emotion wheel, and it's like eight emotions. And we were going over this every morning, every morning. I would skip the anger emotion. I'm like, I don't feel anger. I don't mm-hmm. feel anger. And she's going, she's going, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Cause I get angry all the time. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, not me. What I, what we discovered after working through that, because we're using a tool, mm-hmm. what I discovered is you negative work. emotions were not important or were not promoted when I was young. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, the, the positive ones were of joy, but negative ones were not, whether it was in church. So I never learned how to express anger. Mm-hmm. So and now so now I've got all this anger built up inside of me. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to get rid of it healthily. Mm-hmm. So that's why we got to go to the relationship with God. Then mm-hmm. we go to this relationship in a community, mm-hmm. which is where Anthony fits in. Great. Uh, just us talking about that earlier. You had me all excited, Anthony, about <laughs> yeah, going and sitting in with you guys. But then also through that community, gaining the tools that we need as men, you're talking about a young man who doesn't know how to do any of this. Mm-hmm. Right. And and now he's listening to a, a, a couple of old guys, um, yeah. you know, trying to give him some advice. Mm-hmm. But what we're doing is we're coming at it from love. Mm-hmm. We want you to realize, hey, man, we understand that you might not be feeling secure about who you are in your manhood, mm-hmm. about who you are as a person, who you are in your mm-hmm. identity. What we want to offer is we want to offer a community at least once a month where you can come to a show, listen to men, get vulnerable about who they are, mm-hmm. where they've been, what they've come through, so that maybe we can give you a few tools. That's, good. That's exactly where I wanted us to go. Emotional so, intelligence. It's so important. It's so important because you have to be able to start with yourself first Mm -hmm. so that when that young man comes to you, he's going to see you. He's going to see the the change. He's going to see the light. He's going to see that, Oh, Mm -hmm. he's vulnerable, but this man has something that I want to Mm -hmm. be like. Well, that, that thing is, and brother Carter hit on it earlier. It's identity. Yes. Is what is your true identity? 
Mm-hmm. And for me, when I was younger, I was told I was adopted. And my lowest moment was that, you know, I was out searching who, who I was mm-hmm. and I put on a facade. I use self-medicating drugs, alcohol, mm-hmm. sex with promiscuous women, anything I could find that would fulfill or mm-hmm. make me believe that that was what a real man, man was. was. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. And until I had actually been broken and receiving God's love, through men that were transparent and vulnerable, then I started the journey of, oh, wow, I can actually be something that society is not teaching me, but spiritually men are teaching me through the Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. and actually being able to get vulnerable and transparent. I think this boils down to when I was a kid, my dad would tell me, suck it up, stop crying, all those things. So when trouble hit, the last person I was going to talk to was my dad. Yeah. Now I believe that it's our job as men, mentors, teachers, is that we need to have candid private conversations that are vulnerable and transparent with young men and not about what they're going through, right. but what, what we, we are going through. Yes. Like that I'm struggling today, as Brother Carter would say, is my physical appearance. Mm-hmm. Or I'm struggling today with uh, about uh, how other people are talking, and I think they're talking about me, but they're actually talking about mm-hmm. something completely yes. different. Mm-hmm. Yes. We need to educate them on these nuances that uh, infiltrate uh, mental health that that don't allow men to be empowered, to be authentic and vulnerable, that is empowered. Wow. That's so, wow. Yeah. I'm going to throw throw my little two cents in on this, talking about being uh, transparent, transparent and and, and talking to younger men about who we are. You know, they see us one way, be older guys. We've been through a lot in our life, in our lives. And, We've actually matured somewhat, somewhat in somewhat. our life. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that's honest. Yeah. And so the thing is, in mentorship is what I see men are talking from a perspective of where they are versus where they came from. True. And so that's mm. you lose your audience when you're not vulnerable enough to go back to that you was once that young, young lad mm-hmm. you're talking yeah. to. You mm-hmm. know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. I was once you, young man. This yep. is, I went through this too. That uh, hip. Uh, I agree with that. I think bridging I'll, the gap. I, I, I agree with you. We ain't heard from Justin in a I, while I, over there. I know. We're going to bring <laughs> Justin in on this one here. I agree with you. I think mm-hmm. that you can't even start to mentor someone if you're not willing to put yourself on the line. Yeah. Because and no one. We see it in church all the time. Yes. You know, you know, we, people we do, people been in church and they talk. Of, you know, they're talking at they, people. They talk about where they are right now. We've uh, well, always been this whole in. <laughs> You've always yeah. been like this. You've never oh, no. been. Exactly. All right, so. Justin, jump on in there. All right. You know, everything I know about myself, I know in retrospect. But when mm-hmm. I was when I was younger, I was just reacting from one situation to another, right? Right. But I, I spent so much of my time searching for acceptance because I did not accept myself. And one of the ways that I did that was through sex. And I was in a long-term relationship for, for over 10 years. Mm-hmm. But um, I think the very lowest point in my life was being blackout drunk, having sex with the babysitter on the couch. And my wife walks into the living room and says, what in the world is going on? Are you doing? And mm-hmm. I just had a moment of clarity of like, oh, my God, what am I doing? What is going on mm-hmm. in my life? Like, this is where I am. And I like, you know, I talk about shame a lot and the shame monster eating my lunch. Mm-hmm. I was so filled with shame after that event. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, in that moment, I was blackout drunk. I felt a little bit of shame. The next day, I was suicidally ashamed of myself. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that's that's a hard place to be. And that I was in that situation because I couldn't accept who I was. Like, that and- is that is where insecurity took me. I love that because here's the thing. You guys are not the only one that had a low moment. Mm -hmm. So someone that is listening that's on here, they're in their low moment. But if they can look at you guys right Mm -hmm. now, you guys made it through. And so you are the light to those people that are to those young men or even females that are in their low moment. Mm -hmm. And if you guys got through it, they can get through it. And that's why I asked the question, what was your low moment? Mm -hmm. Because, um, 
I do feel that we all have it, but we need someone to say, hey, I can get out of it. Or I need mm-hmm. to see an example of someone that got out of it mm-hmm. and got on the other side. Thank you, Justin. Thank you guys for sharing. Real quick, Val, I want to I want to say something to the men out there. Mm-hmm. Being vulnerable does not mean you have to cry on your woman's Come shoulder on all the now. time. That's yes, not what that that's means. not what that yeah. means. We're not talking about sharing yeah. your emotions and getting yeah. all sad. Yes. Yeah. We're talking about just telling who you really, True. really are. I yes. want to make sure we clarify. Yeah. I, I, I'm glad you. I'm glad you did that. because it's not about being weak. It's not about, it's actually a strength. Mm -hmm. Just share, be who you are, share who you are and where you've come from. It's a weak word for a man though. Vulnerable. Mm -hmm. But is it a, but is it a, but is it a weak word or have we made it a weak word? Just hearing the word. But why does it make you weak? It don't make no, you. Weak. I didn't say it you. Make make you weak. Weak. It yeah. goes back to what yeah. we think other people think. Yeah, it right. means. That's, I, right. that's what I'm saying. But why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because why? that's the way we were taught. Yeah. That's that's the way it's been. And, you know, in, in, in the American culture, anyways, it's yeah. it's we're we're uh, hunters. We're just hunters. Mm. We, we don't we don't care about the emotional side. We just going to we're going to hunt. You're we're going, going hunt for, for what you're a woman. Mm-hmm. We're going to hunt for a job. We're going to hunt, hunt, hunt. That's yeah. what we we're trained to do. Yeah. So being vulnerable in the midst of that. Yeah, with the ne- Neanderthal, you know, uh, when I came with that Billy club to hit you in your head and drove <laughs> you back to the cave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I love all, the other aspect. All, 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 all the to come out. <laughs> she's going to beat you on the head. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, he looking at Brother Carter. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> brother Carter, you really telling your age. Me, Brother Carter. <laughs> you bow. <laughs> you know, um, I, I don't know how to go. Anthony, jump in here. I don't know what to do well, with this. One. The other aspect of this is is the mistakes. I think that there's a stigmatism in, in this culture that mistakes are bad. Yes. Some of your greatest philanthropists, entrepreneurs, uh, anybody out there, uh, including everybody in this room, we are who we are is because we faced our mistakes. We address them as, as painful as they may be, mm-hmm. as scary as they may be. We have to face them. You have to. And once you do, yes, the first step is difficult. It's gut wrenching, but you got to go through it. You can't go around it and avoid it. Avoidance is a horrible coping mechanism. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, the initial wave is going to be brutal and, and intense. But as Justin B. Long has so eloquently put, that after that yes. it has allowed him empowered him to move on and not stay in that finality mentality of i want to take my life and and mm-hmm. severe shame and yes guilt, is that you have to face it and you can't face it alone here's the deal you cannot do this alone and that's the false that's mentality exactly. of a man is that i do need a woman i do need a brother i do need a mentor i do need a mentee i need other people it goes back to community but I will find, and I get it, the word vulnerability is difficult, Mm -hmm. but I'm telling you right now, you will not find the right community until you are authentically vulnerable and transparent. Once you do that, Mm -hmm. and it's difficult, but once you do it, you will be liberated and you will be connected in a place that you belong and that that part of the body of Christ your part of where you fit in mm-hmm. won't compare yourself to others. Yeah. No don't make you. me run and jump yeah. up in All here. Right, yeah. That right and, there, and, is, yeah, if you don't mind, mm-hmm. that right there is so important. Mm-hmm. The moment you pull the mask down, mm-hmm. open up the heart and not concern yourself with how, and I know it's difficult. It was difficult for me. I'm mm-hmm. sure it was difficult for you guys. And not concern yourself with how others are going to see you. Mm-hmm. But it's almost like you have to breathe. You got It's almost like taking your area. It's something It's necessary. Mm-hmm. You got to do it. You and it's, a, do it's it. important, Val, to understand, too, that a lot of this comes from loving yourself. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because when we talk about you matter, a lot of times what, what I've discovered, um, I remember a couple of years ago, I told my wife, I said, are you really loving yourself? Mm-hmm. Because scripture is is very adamant. Love others mm-hmm. as you love, love yourself. yourself. You have to love yourself. If you're not happy with who you are, if you're not happy with the way you look, if you're mm-hmm. not happy with certain self-esteem Things, uh, yes. issues, I mean, it's it's important that you 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 find that community that's, that's going to be vulnerable, mm-hmm. that's going to encourage you and lift you up. But you have to learn to love yourself. Mm-hmm. So true. So true. And, um, I'm going to jump ahead. in here on vulnerability. Vulnerability sometimes can mean just admitting 
there that you're in a bad place. Mm-hmm. There it is. That's you it. know, it's, at some point you have to recognize and say, I need help mm-hmm. in this area. That's mm-hmm. what vulnerability mm-hmm. looks like. Wow. Just saying, exactly right. you know, man, I, I need help in this area. I'm, I'm, I'm screwing this up mm-hmm. over and over again. Yes. The yep. grand yeah. design of intelligence is recognizing a problem, mm-hmm. admitting it's a problem, mm-hmm. and then asking help yeah. for it. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's that, that's awesome right yeah. there. Well, I, I know we so, need... Oh, to- before that, because uh, okay. I want to go back to Justin real quick okay, uh, on, that, on that shame, because... <laughs> Mm. On that shameful place you were in your life, you know, many people go into this shameful area in their life and, and get to a place where they want to harm themselves and mm-hmm. stuff like this. But they tend to get over it and end up doing it again. Mm. And right. so what would you say to an individual that have screwed up and felt the guilt, felt the shame? Got over it and did it again. Oh, that's is a, there that's, any hope for individuals oh, wow, like that? Wow, that's a good one there. There is. You know, after that horrible event, I did that three or four more times before mm-hmm. I got sober. Like, I did mm-hmm. that for several years after yeah. that deep, mm-hmm. dark moment. Like, that wasn't enough for me to change what I was doing. Right. Because at that point, I didn't I didn't realize there could be another way. Mm-hmm. But, um, it doesn't matter how far down a dark road you go. You can always turn around and come back out of that. That's right. That's um, right. That, that's that's the, the the most important thing to know is that there's there's no point of no return unless you do something that's permanent. But and no matter what you feel about yourself, you also have the power to change what you feel about yourself. One hundred percent. That's 100%. so important to know. We're gonna but bring. I to the, say, go ahead. Go ahead. I get two seconds okay. on on you know being vulnerable. You know the power of vulnerability is displayed in movies all the time. And I, I think we're, most people are unconscious to it, but when you watch a movie and the main character always has a flaw and we, we get attached to that main character. We love that person for who they are. And it's because we see their flaws and who they are as a whole person. And mm-hmm. in real life, we don't get that most of the time, mm-hmm. but the people that we are drawn to are the ones that we know and we see those flaws and we love them because of who they are, not because of some false facade that they're putting up. Wow. Wow. That's good. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's good. Well, we're going to bring the people, uh, all of the Carter crew in here. Uh, we got quite a few comments and uh, questions, and we're going to try to address some of their questions. You want to give it to me, Abigail? Yes. I want to read some just comments that we got mm-hmm. first and then go into the questions because we have a lot of people giving some really good feedback mm-hmm. um, that I think is really impactful. I'll start with uh, Piers Reese says, I'm a kind of person who is who is like, I don't care, but deep down it's me who cares the most, Uh which I think kind of contributes to that, like that um, men of steel attitude, right? Like I can't show that I care because that's a sign of weakness. Yes. I I always say, I call it cut the crap, cut the crap, cut the crap. That's where like nonchalance comes in. People use nonchalance as like a defense. But in reality, we can see right through, right through. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Peter Jasper says to solve insecurities. First, we need to normalize. Even man can have insecurities. It's not only women. They also have emotions. Yes, that's right. Guillermo says, um, I always find it difficult to show the real me to people around me. That's why I always tend. That's why they always tend to misunderstand me because mm. mm. they don't Imagine know that. Yeah, no. yeah. I think we let's just kind of stay there. Okay. That that's what he's struggling with. He's mm-hmm. saying it in a nutshell. Mm. So Guillermo, guess what? You got your answer. Just show who you are. You know, and there will be the right pe- person around you that's going to get you, that's going to support you, that's mm-hmm. going to need to get something from you. Everybody's not going to get you. Period. No, that's, that's okay. Right. That's, yeah. go. Everybody's not to. That. But yeah. you need to walk in ex- exactly who mm-hmm. you are. As long as who you are is not hurting someone else, walk in it. Yeah. Well, let's be real, though. you got to get down to what's hindering you too. Yes. Let's not just say, look, I can just have bold faith and mm-hmm. courage and that's, stuff. That's out. good. Anthony. I got to get in with somebody, whether it's a counselor, a mentor, a sponsor, um, you know, somebody that's not connected to the situation. Yes, that's and true. Say, all right, what is it about that trauma or that situation that keeps triggering me mm-hmm. and hindering me in public situations where I actually need to get down to that with somebody in private? Mm-hmm. And here's the deal. The Bible has a, a, a proverb called um, wounds of a friend are faithful. It's in the same chapter as um, Iron Sharpens Iron, chapter 27. 
And I need to trust somebody that's not connected to the situation that I share why I'm hindered Mm -hmm. and get down to the deep parts of it. Mm -hmm. And then I have to trust and believe and be willing to hear what they have, what they have to say. And then gradually not full force, but gradually start applying that guidance Mm -hmm. from them, from what I was vulnerable and, and shared. And then it'll go back to me being able to actually feel and express all different types of emotions gradually in social situations. 100%. I can use assertive communication. Like if brother Carter upsets me, I think we've met each other enough to where I could say, you know what, brother Carter, that upset me. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm upset about that mm-hmm. to where we could have an honest conversation where he's mm-hmm. not going to be like, well, I don't care how you feel. Right. Mm-hmm. I know that I've met him enough. We've talked enough. If I express an emotion, now it's not bottled up. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go home. And if some little thing happens, I'm, I'm going to blow my right. top. And everybody's mm-hmm. right. going to be like, what's wrong with you? Right. What just happened yeah. here? Right. If well, the car actually- piss me off. <laughs> man, I was taking it out on you. <laughs> That's it. 100%. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Be that secret. Yeah. Shall find. There you go. Be that knock the door shall be open unto him and uh, i think the bible this just a revelation just came to me while you were speaking there that if if you seek some guidance mm-hmm. if you seek some help yes it's going to be there for you yes. you know it, it's there for you well, they're asking the wrong people yeah. the wrong source right yes, right that, that, that you do yes. have to go to, i know you're promoting your business also you know trying to <laughs> well, get counsel no that's a lord's business all right you want to keep going yeah. yeah i think a good question to kind of segue <laughs> into that um so anna asked how can you tell your boyfriend to get therapy without making him become defensive or or say that they don't need it but you know they need it and this is not boyfriend this This can go to anybody you know somebody who you know needs therapy i I gotta jump on this go ahead you don't tell him no Mm. you do not tell him you can encourage him you can say you know oh is it possible or you know are these things an issue and then let him make the decision Mm. support him in what he's going through be vulnerable and transparent in what you're going through but you cannot tell him i've tried it with uh women that i've been in relationships Mm -hmm. with it does not work no Mm -hmm. you actually don't get a Get a wall. Mm. Yeah. Because yeah. it can come off yeah. like condescending. Yeah. Like you yeah. need therapy. You know yeah. what I mean? No one yeah. wants to hear that. Yeah. 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 All right. I have a, an alternative into that. Go ahead. There's a book by a guy named Justin B. Long you know? called okay. The Righteous Rage of a 10 Year Old Boy. Yes. And like you can give somebody a book as a gift. And that is a great tool for helping people mm-hmm. kind of develop some self awareness just by associating like oh i see what this guy's talking about and i have some of that too yes like it's a it's an icebreaker way into considering that maybe maybe i have some challenges and maybe there's a way that i can work on them mm. wow justin good way to segue your uh mm. promote your stuff but that's yeah, there you go <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep going you check that book out it's really good it is a good book um, so I, I'm going to ask another question and someone mm-hmm. actually responded with an answer, but mm-hmm. I'm going to read that. I want you guys to also of put your two cents in on the question. So it's from Rosemary Fletcher says, do you think toxic society is the reason for creating insecurities? And Sandy Park responded and said, there are many toxic parents who are also the reason for insecurities in their child. Okay. So I do want us to tackle the question. Do you think society is the reason people have insecurities? I don't necessarily know, and this is just my opinion, I don't necessarily know if it has to do with society as a whole. I think it has to do with a lot of your upbringing Mm -hmm. and your childhood and your experiences that you went through. And so uh, for me, I really, I think it starts as a, when you're young. Mm -hmm. Yep. Insecurities are definitely created by the people that you trust the most when you are at your most impressionable. Yes. Yeah. That's, I, I, I'm gonna bring my sports analogy uh, analysis in here on this thing here because there are a lot of parents out there that uh, wanting their children to be uh, professional stars and stuff mm-hmm. like this, uh, go to the NBA, NFL, or whatever the case may be, and they're pushing, 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 pushing the kid to do, and the kid don't even want to do it. Then mm-hmm. that brings about a very insecure individual when you do that. You have to. You yes. know, I can't tell you how to parent your child or nothing like that, but but don't try to live through and, your child. And that could be in anything, not yes. just sports, right? Right. I mean, I want you to be a doctor. I want yeah, you to yeah, be a lawyer. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm just using the sports analysis. Yeah. It's of, so yeah. true. It's yeah. Yeah. So true. 
it goes back to it's not society it's the influence of society that you allow in the home mm -hmm. you, you know i love when denzel washington asked him a question and he just answered well was the father in the home <laughs> was the father there and the, and the truth is is we can't use society as an excuse for what we do inside our relationships and homes 100 mm -hmm. well, i'm gonna beg a different with you on that i think we can uh, blame society because you as a man absorb everything that's in society in, in society and you transferring all the, those emotions because we're all human but it goes and back we're being fed a whole lot of stuff these days but i think it goes back to uh, if, if we think about it mm -hmm. what was happening to that child which is the adult that has the insecurity mm -hmm. at a young age there was something missing, something that that child wasn't God, getting mm -hmm. or something that was happening to that child mm -hmm. that affected their, their self-esteem and their confidence as a young child. So they grew up mm -hmm. with these insecurities. Mm -hmm. And so every time someone had something negative, they took it in like a bag, mm -hmm. you know? So I think it starts at a young age, yeah. the yeah. insecurity. And so when you grow up with that, you end up transferring that same insecurities over to your children too, don't you? Yes. Yeah, yeah you do. Wow. And if you don't ever, if you don't ever get intentional about how you are as a person, like if you're just, just existing, then yeah, you're going to transfer all that stuff to everybody. But it's our yeah. responsibility to, once we know that, that we have control over this stuff, it's our responsibility to determine what we accept from culture and society and what we reject. Right. So exactly. How we yes. present control ourselves. That. Uh, Aaron is waving her hand here. And then I got a couple of more that I mm -hmm. want Abigail to go ahead. Aaron. Yeah, I was just kind of curious as to whether or not, like if insecurity is just part of the human experience, because a lot of what I was hearing was, you know, it might be things from your childhood, who you surround yourself with society as a large, <laughs> but at the end of the day, insecurity it's because you don't feel secure and as you grow up and you do life and you're forming your identity and understanding who you are like the it's when you form your identity you're secure in those things whether you're conscious or subconscious so is it just you're securing your insecurity is what you're saying <laughs> well i think i think it's, it's, it's two things aaron i hear what you're saying but i think the problem is, what i'm hearing it still goes back to you in a very vulnerable age, an impressionable age as a child, what is being poured into you early on. Mm -hmm. And so I, and please someone jump in if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. I think what happens is, is those insecurities, if they're not checked, if you're getting negative poured into you as a kid, you grow up as a teen and an adult with those negative insecurities mm -hmm. that were affected early on that was not you, you, does that make sense what i'm saying it does yeah. i think i think there's there's a little bit of truth to that we do we do carry insecurities just that's who we are mm -hmm. uh, as natural man uh, not realizing who god's created us to be mm -hmm. um and i say that because even at 55 years old i carry insecurities mm -hmm. right i still yeah. carry i still yeah. have some it's, insecurities it's actually, you know at 62 I, yes yeah i still have the fear of man sometimes mm -hmm. i still fear rejection i still carry those so th there's some truth to that that sometimes it's just who we are because we're not perfect um oh wow but it's it's going yeah. into a community and mm -hmm. which is what we keep saying mm -hmm. uh going into that community yeah. having a community that's going to lift and this you up. is the, and this is having a spiritual foundation behind you and still yeah. have some insecurity next exactly mm -hmm. so exactly. Well, we got to remember an insecurity is a belief right mm -hmm. and as a human our whole existence is built on we have a million beliefs every one of us has a million beliefs exactly and it's almost impossible to go through them one by one and challenge them is do i really believe this or is this just something that i absorbed along the way mm -hmm. but overcoming insecurities is that ex examining that particular belief and then changing our mind on that yeah. but you have to do that you have to work at that it doesn't just automatically happen it's a no. constant but the thing is we do you do have the power to make the change if you want to make yep. the change. That's 100%. Yeah. Abby? I was going to say, I agree with Darren in that, yes, I think a lot of, you know, your deep-rooted insecurities come from, you know, your up upbringing or trauma. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think they go hand in hand. But mm -hmm. a lot of, I think a lot of things that people are insecure about are things that 
you know, I know for me, some of the insecurities I have, some of them are things that nobody's even ever even said to me or brought up. Mm -hmm. It's something I thought up on my own. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think, I think outside forces definitely are a contributor, probably the main contributor to a lot of those like really intense ones. Cause if someone's constantly in your ear telling you something Mm -hmm. about yourself, you're going to start to believe it. But I do think it can come from like your own thoughts and just something, Mm -hmm. maybe you're comparing yourself to people. But where do your thoughts come from? Could it be something that you've seen? Could it be what something that you inspire? to get or be mm-hmm. like someone because the thoughts don't just come. I think I think, I think, most, I think mostly it do come from comparing, but I believe major parts of our insecurityness come from our uh, what you can see. Mm-hmm. What you see is what you brings more uh, a reality. Your reality, uh, brother, is good. I man. forgot the damn going word. <laughs> well, <laughs> insecurity. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, I think our biggest issue is just getting over our own selves. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and it's accept yourself for who you are. Mm-hmm. You know, and, you matter. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, like, like the thing say, you do matter. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you have to believe that yourself. You know, you, you can't get it from, from Val. You can't get it from Brother Carter. Yeah. You can't get it from anyone outside of yourself. These this confidence and and lacking of uh, security, or should I say, it has to come through prayer, and supplication, and believing in God and believing in you. And it, it ain't got nothing to do with other humans outside. But I of do. I I think others can. That's a help false you. sense. No, listen to what I'm saying. I, that's what I oh, believe. Okay, I'm not saying that it doesn't matter. What I'm saying is. I think that it does come from within, but mm-hmm. you also, and it comes from God, but I do think it helps to connect yourself with someone that is also pouring into you. Oh, true, you true. understand what yeah, I'm saying? Because yeah. you can't, you can't walk this thing called life alone. All right. Quick. I got to add on this. I can't sure. on it. Brother Carter just hit the nail on the head is that it's an indicator. We're talking about insecurities and emotions are attached to that. I think too many times if we're angry, insecure, it's an indicator that there's something that needs to be addressed or you need to do something or that you don't need to do something. Mm -hmm. So if I'm feeling insecure, that might be a spiritual attack to keep me from my purpose or my true identity. Mm -hmm. And, And if you don't believe in spiritual, then you haven't read the Bible where it says the great accuser is accusing us spiritually to think that we're something that we're not. Mm-hmm. And and that's the, the key is in the element is if I'm feeling insecure, that's it. My body, my spirit, God, it, it, and, and the enemy, every, every aspect of it is indicating that I need to, to either do something or don't do something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to being insecure, mm-hmm. that's telling me maybe I need to do something that will build self-esteem, mm-hmm. that will alleviate that and allow me to believe in my identity. Yeah. A right. man that thinketh himself something when he is nothing, he only deceives himself. All right, then. Abigail. So stop putting so much stock in yourself, make making you believe that you all of that, uh, Abigail. You are all of that, but you don't have to tell the world that you're all of that. <laughs> it goes back to our <laughs> final thought. Now you got the right card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, she was putting up scripture and prayer. Did we do that? <laughs> uh, Whoopsie. Whoopsie. Okay, then. We, uh, y'all see what time it is. But we're going to do our final thoughts. Thank you guys so much. Oh, man. They were Thank fire. you, Carter Crew, for just staying tuned for the whole two hours there, man. Thank God for you all to oh, be on the show. Y'all are a light to our path on this show, and we hope that we are giving you something to help you just live just a little bit better uh, yeah, each week. Well, I want to start with um, mm-hmm. Justin on the screen. If mm-hmm. you could tell us what you got out of the show, leave the people, the Carter crew with something and uh, your experience as always and how they can find you. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I think that uh, the most important takeaway is that happiness is an inside job. Like who, who I am comes from me. It doesn't come from anybody else. And mm-hmm. if I'm not happy with who I am, I have the power to change that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, just sorting through all of the nonsense. There's so much crap that comes at us all day, every day, but sorting through that, trying to realize what's important, what's not important 
and how I feel about myself is the most mm. important thing. It's like when I learn to love myself, everything else changes and, and the world becomes a better place. So that, that's my thought for, for closing remarks. But um, you can find my website at jboydlong.com. And my mm -hmm. books are there to include The Righteous Rage of a 10-Year-Old Boy, along with a, a bunch of other ones. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of audio stuff and blogs and, and good resources if you'd like to get plugged into me and what I'm doing. Yeah. All righty. Justin, thank you. a lot you. of good stuff there with J.B. Long yes. over there. So mm -hmm. then I'm connect gonna, with him if you can, if you will. And then I'm going to turn over to Darren. Woo! What a good show. Um, I want to, I want to, the, the whole title of the show is You Matter. Um, and, and I had this going through my head all day. And I think there's a lot of men that need to hear this. Mm -hmm. The story of Gideon in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Gideon said, I'm the least of the least. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we, we will take uh, the mistakes we've made and we'll let, a, we'll let those mistakes run our lives. Um, and, and, or we just view ourselves as nobody. And mm -hmm. what we have to do is we have to take the identity that the angel gave to Gideon. And that is, you are a mighty warrior. Yeah. You are a mighty warrior. That means you can be vulnerable, but it also means you carry strength. Hmm. That means you can, you can cry when you want to cry, but it mm -hmm. also means you're firm when you need to be firm mm -hmm. and you pray and ask for the wisdom for that Gideon warrior that you are. Oh, wow. wow. And how can they find you? What do you have going on? <laughs> <laughs> Who um, are you? I, I, I'm just there. I, I'm just there. <laughs> uh, I, I do voiceover. You can find me at uh, Darren at DunnSpoken.com, D-U-N-N-S-P-O-K-E-N. Or you can find uh, some uh, bracelets that will remind you of who you are on Gracelets.com, G-R-A, just like bracelet, but with a G. Mm -hmm. And look at the bracelet. warrior line. Okay. Yep. There That's you it. go. There All you right. go. All righty then. And last, but well, not even last. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to turn it over to my brother, Anthony. Mm -hmm. Who are you and what do you want to leave the people with? And uh, how can they find you? I am all the things that God says I am. Mm -hmm. so I am that, what that, God says I am. Yeah, I'll, I'll just answer that question, simply put. And then the message that I have for those out there is that Connect with somebody who's insecure and you might learn something about yourself. I think too many times we don't like something about somebody mm -hmm. and the chances are you don't like that about yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's good to learn about yourself. Like Brother Carter said earlier, is don't think of yourself too high. Um, you may learn a thing or two by stepping down into somebody, uh, <sighs> somebody else's world and connecting with them, and you may find a grand purpose and identity that uh, you can live with and that you can build upon. I think there's a lot to say. I've learned it in my own life is stepping uh, uh, down there with the people that are struggling. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. And how can they find you? Uh, you can find me at the PTSD Foundation of America. It's in Houston, Texas. Uh, our website's ptsdusa.org. I'm actually on the mentor page. Mm -hmm. You can uh, find many mentors there. Uh, all contact information's there. I, I, I tell you. Uh, Where is that again? Say that again. That Where is, is ptsdusa.org. And they serve, you guys serve uh, men that have been, through, men and women that have been through um, the armed forces? Yes. Well, we specifically uh, help men that uh, are coming out of jails, off of drugs, um, broken relationships, um, major traumas in childhood, and especially our main focus is PT combat related PTSD men that have um, watched their brothers die in their arms. Mm -hmm. um, we deal with a lot of trauma. Um, it's an amazing, amazing foundation. So they don't have to. Uh, they don't have to be a part of the military. No, they do. They do. They okay, do. they have they to do. be service. Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. All righty then. Thank you so much, and Brother Carter. Wow. Uh, don't give up. Don't give in. Don't listen to all the outside noises outside of yourself. Start trusting and believing in yourself. Start building your confidence and your self-esteem up within yourself. Look at the man in the mirror and say, I'm all right with that individual. And start really believing that. And watch how your world start turning. He had to throw in the little MJ, didn't he? He yeah. did. He had to. He had to. That was yes, really good. Because I'm I, starting with the man in the mirror. All righty. And uh, I'm Abigail, asking him to change his way. You, Abigail, you have something before I close out? Uh, yeah. Um, 
I think y'all kind of wrapped it up with the final thoughts, but I do want to say follow us at LV with Val on all platforms. Uh, you can visit lvwithval.com for 24 hour music, other radio shows, and also download the LV with Val app. And I want, thank you so much. And I want, Aaron, you have anything you want to leave with final actually, thoughts? Actually, yeah. So there is a book I've been reading. Mm-hmm. Um, and the first few chapters really is going into like vulnerability, everything we've been talking about today. But the book is focused on like human trafficking. And I realized in this conversation, we can't afford to not be vulnerable because predators will prey on the vulnerable. Mm, wow. wow. One, one excellent way to end this uh, show. I want to say to the Carter crew, I love you guys so much. Every Saturday, you guys give me so much strength. You let me know that we are doing what God has called us mm. to do. We look forward to talking with you and seeing you guys next time. Bye. Right. We're out of here. <laughs>